Hello everyone, this is the chapter 29 discussion and lecture notes for Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. And again, chapter 29. Let's go to the notes. Let's fix this up a little bit. There we go. All right, so. Hectate tells Scout that her costume was slashed with a knife. She tells her story and turns to look at the man who brought her home. Suddenly she realized the man who saved them is Arthur Boo Radley. So first of all, before we get to the questions... We'll just talk about the idea that Sheriff Tate realizes right away that a, the knife that was in Bob Ewell's ribs was the knife that slashed her costume. So the costume saved her life. And the kids have had some terrifying events in this story. Um, the lynch mob, the, gu the gun shot at them in part one, which they didn't know was up in the air. They thought it was toward them. And now a legitimate attempted murder here. And so these kids are never going to be the same. These last few years of their lives have been absolutely horrifying on a many levels. And yes, again, Scout was almost murdered here. And um, what's interesting, though, is she, it's Boo Radley. And we had mentioned way back in part one that because Boo Radley was in the house for 15 years and was just like urban legend, the kids still thought he was a kid. So she had no idea when it's a 30-year-old man saving her. And so... This goes back to part one when Boo was leaving them little gifts in the tree. Boo was looking out for them the whole time. And when the fire at Miss Maudie's house, uh, the kids had the blanket over their shoulders. So Boo has been their guardian angel this whole time and is the same at the end of the story when Boo saves her from being killed. Jem could have been killed as well. So he may have saved both of their lives. So we're going to look at the questions now we have two questions here explain the feelings the finches had after realizing the kids could have died so if you need to pause this to think about it definitely do so well Atticus first of all he stayed home because he was tired and as we mentioned in our last discussion Bob Ewell had been on a rampage and it was not a good time to leave your children alone no matter how tired you were but um but that's what happened and so Atticus had to be completely beside himself that he didn't think to be with his kids when they needed him most and that in their moment of need he was nowhere to be found and also the realization that he could have been without both of his kids forever and they could have been murdered and so just the terrified feeling of this is what happens in an evil society and and the kids again the kids aren't going to get past this. This isn't something that you just forget about in three weeks. And throughout the story, especially Jem, who was older and realized more and more the underlying reasons for these things, he has screwed up. There's no way Jem has a normal life after this, after all the problems and the horrible evil that he's seen. And an attempt on his life as well. So yes, the family has to be in complete free fall here. There isn't just, well, let's just knock the dirt off and we're back to a good old happy family tomorrow. Not going to be that way. Um, nowadays, you'd be going for intensive therapy to even try to get back to some sense of normalcy. And um, obviously, they weren't going to therapy back then. So very clearly, um, horrible. You can't change it. And there's no turning back after what happened in a situation like this. And then the second question, it's learned that Arthur Boo Radley saved the children. What can we learn about him from this uh, on both an obvious and a not so obvious level? And so we did talk about in earlier in this section that Boo saving the children, he was their guardian angel. So that was like kind of an obvious one. On the not so obvious level, um, we now think about all the terrible things that people in the society had said about him in the, in the make him society, about how he was a monster and things. Well, he got into trouble as a teenager. We don't know what that real trouble was. There was that story where he put the scissors into his dad's leg, pulled it out and went back to his life. Not, didn't happen. There's no way that happened most likely. And so we learn that society made him out to be a monster based on stories and hearsay. And this guy ends up being somebody who's saving people's lives, looking out for people. Even though he doesn't get out of the house, when he does, it's to do good. And 
unfortunately in our society, if society decides that you don't fit their frame of what they expect in a person, they cast you aside very quickly. And so what I tell you who are listening to this, keep doing the good that you're doing, even if people don't recognize it and don't honor you for it. You know you're doing the right thing. The right person will appreciate you for who you are, but you can't control what the masses do. You can only keep doing the right thing. And Boo did the right thing. Thank you for listening, and that's it for chapter 28, or is that 29? No, 29, that was chapter 29, sorry about that.